Now there'll be no problem. Thank you. Uh, Dr. James Newman, aboard Space Vehicle Endeavour, yes. what's your mission? Our mission is uh, actually uh, not a single mission in the sense of just coming up and doing one thing. We're really here to, to work and live in space. Today we deployed the Spartan satellite, which will be on a two-day mission to, to study solar science. Uh, we'll next deploy the Wakefield facility for studying new technologies uh, in micro, in uh, uh, semiconductor electronics. Mm -hmm. And we also have a spacewalk to uh, study some of the techniques for the space station construction. Let me, let me take some of the incoming calls to you. Maybe they can get through to you more clearly. Our phone number, 1-800-222-KABC. Larry, good morning. Yes, good morning, Michael. Uh, just wanted to uh, wish uh, Dave Walker and the uh, crew uh, the very best of luck and, and the congratulations from the Career Academy at Hollywood High School. Uh, and we'd love to have them come and visit the school after they, uh, their experience and tell us a little bit about the trip in space. Well, were you a classmate? Yes, I was a classmate of Dave Walker's at the uh, test pilot school, the Air Force test pilot school. Great. I, I'm watching a picture of you up there in space. You look so incredibly relaxed, more relaxed than I feel right now. I want to go back to that question that I posed earlier. Are, are there moments of fear, or are you too darn busy to be concerned about being frightened? The ascent itself is uh, probably the most frightening part of a launch and if you've ever seen a launch it's really a lot scarier to watch one than it is to be inside the shuttle inside the shuttle you don't see all of the uh the fireworks going on outside and it's just like a, an elevator that's a whole building that goes straight up yeah i rather take an elevator you know something that isn't true i i think i think every one of us watching now has fantasized about doing what you're doing. At what age did you begin to say to yourself, you know something, I'd like to be an astronaut? Uh, there's a little controversy about that, but it was uh, when I was probably between 13 and 15 when I realized it would be a great way to combine flying, a love of the idea of flying, and uh, also science and uh, engineering. Let's take another call. We're speaking to um, a space shuttle Endeavor. We're speaking with Dr. James Newman, astronaut. I'm Michael Jackson. Rene, good morning. Good morning, and I'm so thrilled I can barely believe what's happening to me. My name is Rene Shapiro. I'm speaking to you from Malibu, California. I'm 62, grandma of 11 grandkids, and two years ago, my husband, myself, and two others flew a general aviation plane around the world uh, through re Ukraine and Russia, doing what in 65 hours what you do every 90 minutes. My question is this. What words do you have to my own grandkids and to all the young people who may be listening? Uh, what guidance can you give them if they want to set their career along the flight path you've chosen? How lovely. Did you get that one, Doctor? Yes, I did. And one of the questions that I often ask is, why should kids study hard in school? Uh, math and science are important, but they're hard subjects. We have to study hard at them to be good. And I think that one of the good answers for that question is uh, a career in the space business, and certainly a career as an astronaut. I think that more and more people are going to have the opportunity to fly in space, and I think that this is one route. There's a, a number of other routes as well that, that give kids good reasons to study hard in school, but I strongly believe that the space program is an outstanding example. Great countries do great things, and this is something for all of us, for the kids, for adults, for seniors to enjoy. Rene, thank you very much for your calls. And we're really on the verge of enormous, I mean, I'm quite frankly, to use, I think it was Newt Gingrich's words, frontiers of knowledge and opportunity. And am I correct in saying that NASA is doing more with less these days? Sharp cut off, Houston. Do we lose him? You know, I've, there's so many questions one should get to, and uh, eventually I will. I've done so with the administrator of NASA, you know, why Congress wants to slash NASA's budget. But, uh, Doctor, is NASA doing more with less these days? Absolutely. NASA is finding ways to economize, uh, to do things more efficiently, and up to this point, uh, uh, with a great deal of, of actually, I think, increased safety. The challenge is to continue that in the face of continuing budget pressure. 
Our phone number, 1-800-222-KABC, and it takes you all the way out into orbit, if you will. Bob, you're on 790 KABC Talk Radio with the man aboard Endeavour. How, how long will you be there, Dr. Newman? We'll be here for another 10 days. We'll oh, be picking okay. up the, uh, the Spartan satellite. Hello? Yeah, oh, here's Bob for you, Doctor. Yes, doing Bob. a lot of science with it, yes, and then doing the spacewalk on flight day 10. We hope you'll come and uh, join us for that. I'd love it. I'd love to go, but I'm not bright enough, and I'm too young. Bob, you're on KABC Talk Radio. Good morning. How are you today? Fine. I'd like to say greetings from oh, Delta, thank you. California. What, what's on your mind? I just wanted to say good luck. You know, this is a great opportunity for America. I, I think the space travel is our future. We should put more money into it. Well, instead of launching a few spacecraft every decade, I, I gather NASA is planning to send several probes in, into deep space each year. Would that be a fair assessment of what the plans are for the future? Yes, one of the initiatives uh, that the administrator has been working on is getting some of these probes into space not only cheaper but uh, much more rapidly. It's the faster, better, cheaper idea, which is already beginning to, to bear fruit. Yeah. Uh, appreciate that call, Bob. Rick, you're on 790 KABC Talk Radio, live into space. I'm Michael Jackson. Good morning. Good morning, and greetings from Star Trek Voyager. Uh, you're on the set of Star Trek Voyager? Yes, we're, uh, we're in the art department uh, creating uh, the future, uh, just, uh, just the way you folks are. Uh, my question uh, is, uh, are you looking forward to the uh, spacewalk and uh, the station... Uh, Space Station Assembly uh, practice. The Space Station Assembly practice. How would you respond to the guys who are doing it more fantasy than fact? Uh, well, we're really looking forward to it. We've got a, a, a bunch of new tools and techniques. We're going to get the guys really cold. Now, it'll be Mike and uh, Mike Gernhardt and Jim Voss are going outside, and I'll be having uh, controlling them from the end of the, the Canadian built arm that we have. I went on a spacewalk on my first flight, and so this time I'll get to be on the inside and move them around as they, uh, we're going to take them to some really cold attitudes. It gets oh, I've lost degrees I've below zero, and we have some new suit improvements in order to help keep them warm, because it is very cold when uh, the sun is not shining on you here in space. Uh, for those who are just joining us, we're hearing a, a novel opportunity, but then that's what KABC is day in and day out, a novel opportunity. We are experiencing what it's like to hold a press conference live and direct with a man who's aboard a space vehicle. Uh, we're speaking with Dr. James Newman, astronaut aboard the space vehicle Endeavour. How many times have you been ab uh, aloft? This is my second flight, and I remember from my first one two years ago on STS-51, also in September, uh, a couple of months after I got back from that, I had this intense desire to come back to space. And it's not an opportunity that people get very often. So it's really a pleasure to be back. So is this what we would call a space shuttle? Yes, uh, we were on the space shuttle. And it was designed to be able to take cargo to not only to space, but also return from space. And that's where our program really complements the Russian space program in our international space program now, mm -hmm. because we can bring a, a lot of stuff back, whereas the, the Russians can take a lot of mass into space for their space station, but they haven't been able to bring very much back. Steve, you're on 790 KABC Talk Radio with uh, Dr. James Newman, astronaut. I'm Michael Jackson. Yes, Michael. Um, I just want to say that since I was a little kid, I've always been very fascinated um, by the program. Uh, the NASA program, and I was wondering what was uh, the most thrilling experience in space um, that you ever had? What gave you the biggest rush? I think it was my spacewalk that I'd have to say when, uh, when I went outside in the spacesuit, and when you're outside, here in the shuttle, of course, we still have air, uh, we've got uh, all the comforts of home, but getting into a spacesuit and going outside the shuttle where there's really nothing between you except for this thin spacesuit. Uh, that was really probably the most unbelievable experience that I've ever had. I bet you were pretty cold as well when you went out there. Well, actually, in order to test the uh, attitude that the Hubble Space Telescope 
repair guys, remember them also mm -hmm. a couple of years ago fixing the Hubble Space Telescope, they wanted us to test the attitude. Now in space, if the sun is shining on the space shuttle, then you'll be warm. But if deep space is all you can see, then you'll get very cold. So we tested an attitude to make sure that the Hubble Space Telescope repair uh, workers would not get too cold. So we had a, a medium uh, cold attitude, not too cold. When you speak of, of uh, the space shuttle, it's surely one of the most versatile of space vehicles e ever developed, and yet it represents surely only a very f fractional part of all our U.S. space launches, doesn't it? Yeah, of all the all space launches, uh, yes. Uh, however, it's a significant number of launches uh, of the American space program total. We've had a, there's been a hundred human space flights. And the shuttle is now up to about 70. 71, actually. We're the 71st. Let's take one more call, if we can. George, you're on 790 KABC Talk Radio. One more call, if we can. can. George? Yes, Michael. Yes, sir. I would like to say, first of all, that I am extremely pleased to be able to speak to our astronauts out there and that I have never, ever lost the enthusiasm of watching our country send our men into space. But my question is, uh, Doctor, what do you feel is the future of the shuttle? Is it going to be more of an unmanned as opposed to manned missions? And what do you think about the possibility of taking nuclear waste from our planet and putting it in space, launching it out to the sun, and getting it off of our planet? I'll try to take the first part of that question, and, uh, and that is that the space shuttle itself is definitely a vehicle for people. It's a way of getting people and cargo into space. And it will always be that until sometime in the next century we develop another one. But there's certainly going to continue to be a place for unmanned vehicles. When it comes to just hauling material into space and not having to worry about bringing it back or needing the special skills of people, then an unmanned vehicle is the way to go for communication satellites, for most of those, for example, and for others. As far as just hauling raw material, essentially, or expended nuclear waste into space, that's a bit further down the road. Uh, I think it'll be actually cheaper to find good solutions to that here on Earth rather than uh, sending it into space. We are working on better technologies to make it cheaper to get into space, but in order to, uh, to send the stuff off to the sun is a ways off. I envy and respect what you do. Um, let me stress the envy for a moment, because you are the true heroes that we still write about without criticism. Uh, you are the people who are visiting the frontiers that we, all of us, just sort of dream about, fantasize about. I am respectful of your being able to find some time for us, and I realize you've got a lot of work to do, haven't you? Yes, we have a very busy flight, but it's actually been a pleasure to take a short break uh, to talk with you all then I'd love to do it again. Thank you very, very much indeed for joining us live from Endeavour. Uh, thanks to you, Captain James, Dr. James Newman.